morning, Vissel House Facebook family, and welcome to a live event. We're here at the Home Depot in Reading, Massachusetts, and we're here monitoring one of the workshops they do at Home Depot around the country. And we have an expert today is about tiling, and we have Matt Walker as our expert, the Grand Poobah of Tile. How are you doing? How are you? Very nice to meet you. So tell us about the workshops that happen. What we have here at Home Depot is every week we give a workshop, different types we have, uh, like for instance, today we're doing tiling, but we have other things, other uh, home improvements, how to hang, everything from how to hang window treatments to painting, to any, really anything that you could do yep. you know, at full home yep. improvement. Right. There's the kids, uh, women, everybody, all kinds of kids different Kids workshops, we hold those once a month. Yep. Uh, I believe it's the first weekend of the month. We have Do It Herself, which is for women to, to make things for the, around the house and get them involved with tools. Yeah, so cool. It really and is, this uh, happens at Home Depot's all around the country? All around the country. Cool. All right, well, today's about tile. How do we get started? Well, what we have here, <coughs> just uh, a very simple representation of what a substrate or a floor would be for your kitchen, bathroom, whatever. Okay, so it starts with a good piece of plywood. This is three-quarter plywood here. Good piece of plywood, yep. So what we need to do is to really make sure that the substrate that the tile is going to go on is secure and what we what secure we're using for this yeah. is what's called <coughs> backer board there are other different types but what we're going to use today is backer board it's okay. just a quarter of an inch now Some, sometimes just, this was called cement board but now this is backer called yeah. backer board. it's called hardy backer board okay so this was a little bit long yep and <laughs> what we what we need to do obviously is set it up exactly where it's going to be now what i usually recommend in my class is that you can lay this out on a piece of paper so you have the least amount of joints okay. and the least amount of cutting. Okay. It's very simple to cut. What you're going to use is this tool, okay. which is Should a Should we get a volunteer a to come up and do it? Uh, why don't you let me do the first one okay. and I'll show the, okay. the class how the first All one's right, done. Cool. And uh, then we'll, <clears throat> when we cut the second one, we'll show them how to do it. <clears throat> so very simply, you just want to lay the, the straight edge right there on the edge. You get it on there? Yep. All right. Can I trust you? You're gonna cut my finger? No. Mm. This doesn't really have that sharp in an edge, so you're just gonna score it. Give it another quick run. Just like scoring drywall. See? <coughs> right, pull that back, keep that secure, and snap it right off. That comes off just like, like you that. You knew what you were doing. Yeah. Almost. Clean and Almost. beautiful. Okay. So the next step would be to secure that to our substrate to the plywood. Okay. And what we're gonna be using, these are the screws here. These are specifically for... So not just sheetrock screws, these are coated? No, these are coated. A lot of people just use drywall screws, but really what happens is those rust, they break away from the sure. substrate, yeah. Yeah. and then you've you ruined your tile job. Now on so how this, often do you screw? On the back of the board, we've got dimples that show everywhere that should be secured, right around here on the edges. Oh, so here's a dimple. Yep. Right here, and then what? Oh, six inches away. So about every makes, six inches, and then around the edges. Simple. Okay. Uh, close to the corner, and then you can space them out here. Okay. We're not going to do the whole uh, piece. What we're going to do throw is throw a couple in. Throw a couple in to secure it here. I like that uh, nice torque set too. Yeah, let's go down a little, a little harder than that. Let me just get that in a little better. It wants Good. to be and at you least, want it down below at least the level. flush sure. level. Yep. 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 This is live television. You know, I know what happened. <laughs> okay. Let's that. All right. So, why don't we get a volunteer so they can be doing some of these screwing in? Anybody want to come, come up? Anybody? Yeah. So you just want to see where the dimples are here. <clears throat> you want to take that. Look at you go. All right. So, <laughs> so while she secures that down, uh, anybody else want to cut another one of these pieces here? Yep. So we would bring the next piece up. You want to get it tight? You want you want to help cut one? <laughs> we'll get you on one of them. So come on up here. Cool. So just lay that straight edge down, score it a couple times, and snap it. Oh, okay. One more time. We went a little wide. See how? But that's okay. We can nip it back. Great. Okay. See if it'll break. Nice. 
Very good. Thank you. Okay. So, so that, that, this board's secured. And now normally, you know, we'd, we'd put some mesh right over the top here. What you would do is take thin set and spread it over the joint and then sink this down in just like you would with drywall. Yeah, perfect. And what that does is that, <clears throat> that bonds that so you won't get any cracking up through your That's tiles great. or through yeah. your adhesive. And the better you secure the plywood, the better you secure the backer board, the more you do here, the better that substrate is, the better the tiles It's are. just like your house. Yeah. The better the foundation, the better the job. Right. So now we gotta do some thin set, right? The th we have some thin set over here. One thing I just wanted to touch on is the different kinds of tile. Okay. Uh, we have everything from uh, ceramic to porcelain, which is really a ceramic tile that's been uh, fired longer. It's a little harder. Uh, natural stone. Uh, we also feature, Home Depot features now a 50% less slip resistant tile uh, that works amazing. And that's only, it's available in plank. Uh, isn't and that, it's isn't that called product. rug? That's called <laughs> that's <laughs> right style. Sorry. But it's a it's really is a beautiful tile. All right. What are we using today? This is a floor uh, tile? That's a floor tile. Okay. All uh, floor tiles can be used on walls, but wall tiles cannot be used on Because they're on the lighter floor. gauge. They're a lighter gauge okay. and they will crack. All right. And they're they're more they're less wear resistant. All right. Uh, this is just a very simple tile. It's a twelve by twelve. We have everything from uh, uh, six by thirty six, uh, sixteen by sixteens, twenty four by twenty fours. It's a separate workshop for trying to pick out tile. You come with your <laughs> with your partner and you fight, and that's a whole separate workshop. One of the one yeah. of the things that people ask me all the time when I was working in flooring is, can you pick out a tile for me? I I can pick up a, a type of tile that you can yeah. use, yeah. but it's really all about what you want, yeah. and uh, yeah. that's what we do here. We try to get you involved exactly what you want. You're going to have to live with it. So. All right. Well, you need to show us how to attach the tile to the floor. Okay. Let me. I'm just going to go over here and. Uh, what we I have. I want to remind here. you that we are coming to you live from Reading, Massachusetts, the Home Depot here in Reading. We have Matt Walker doing a tile workshop here with our live studio audience. I'm mixing mixing up some thin set, and what okay. this is, this is VersaBond, which is a, has a polymer in it, uh, and water. Can you put too much water in? What's the, what you are you can, looking to do there? You can put too much water in. If it's too soupy, it won't really adhere and it, it'll take too long to set. You can put too little water in and what will happen is you won't be, have enough time to set your tile. Yeah. So what you want to do is try to get it about the consistency of cake batter or brownie batter. Okay. Uh, within that, and that gives you enough time to work. I always buy my brownies already cooked, which is interesting. Well, we don't... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. We, Sorry. we do make a thin Sorry. set that is, that is pre-mixed, but I I don't recommend it for most cases yeah. because it is, is it really. Is that right? Well, it's about the right consistency. Good. It's about okay. like meringue when it whips. Okay. All right. So. All right. So now we're going to, uh, what do you need? Uh, I need my trowel. Now, what I'm going to be using for this tile is a one quarter by one quarter tile, which is the spacing, the height, and the width of the tile. Quarter up, quarter over. Okay. All right. And what that does is that allows me to put enough down to it, uh, let the tile have good adherence. But now, just imagine that there's all kinds of screws right here that we filled in every dimple. We didn't quite do every dimple for the purposes of time. One of the things I, you know, a lot of people use this to scoop up, but really to me that gets a lot of uh, adhesive on the on the notch trowel. I use just a a, uh, a trowel like this, or you can yeah. use a. Uh, uh, a putty knife, anything you really need, but that gets it. So you, you need to you transport need it up here. Too. Yeah. Okay. So how much do you put on? How, how, well, how far ahead do you let yourself get? Uh, Go ahead. Depending on how, how good you are, uh, you want to, to me, most beginners should probably do about anywhere from like three to four tiles worth. Yeah. Because uh, um, you don't want it to set up on you yeah, before because you get the set. Once, and, I, and I would suggest to go slow at the beginning. So do enough just for three or four. Every application is different. You want to have, you want to have your lines, but you don't want to but scrape you wanna, down. You want to fill that in, right? Yep. You don't want to scrape down where. Look at me being critical of them. See that? <laughs> <laughs> just a troublemaker. I'm just trying to teach class. There you go. There you go. So what you're going to do is pull towards you. A lot of videos you'll see 
they're, they're doing swirls. But what happens when you do the swirls is you're going to have peaks yeah, and, bump, and yeah, bumps yeah. there, and you're not going to have a good set. Yeah. So pull towards you. You want to get right to the edge, obviously. That's probably a good indication. So that's really just to set okay. you first. So what we just picked is a common tile. Uh, some tiles do have uh, directions on them. On the bottom, they have arrows that you would want to really? place in a certain direction. Yeah. This is just, okay. you can put it any way you want. What I do suggest is get two boxes, open two boxes, pick them and mix them. That way you're not oh. looking at one die lot, you're looking at all different types That's of colors idea. throughout the thing. So you want to set your first tile. How much tile do you order? You order extra? Uh, always order anywhere between 10 and 15 percent extra tile. Uh, you can always return it, but if you run out of tile and you have, you know, four or five more tiles to go, yeah, you, you're not going to want to have to go and wait yeah. for the tile to come into the store. And you so break you stuff too. Yeah, you cut, yeah. you cut it wrong too. Yeah, right. Always going to make a few mistakes. So you want to set it down and just kind of wiggle it a little bit. Okay. Just to set it, you don't want to really crush it down. You don't want the adhesive to uh, spurt out of one side. All right. uh, what I like to do, especially on the first run is to keep this area clean. Because you're going to go down this way. Because you're going to come back this okay. way, yeah. Okay. And that way. So that way can we get somebody running. to come up? Somebody, who, who wanted to come up? Come on up, come on up. Come on up, let's, um, why don't you take the trowel and just spread this way, okay? All right. Okay. Hand her the trowel. Oh, yeah. Cool. So you want to use the notch? What's your name? Francesca. Francesca. What a beautiful name. Yeah. Yep, you want now, to at a 45 show, degree yep. angle. This like is great. This. You want to hold it like this, 45 degree angle, and spread it away. You can spread it towards you. You see how if you leave it at the angle, it sort of yeah, pushes it, it along? It pushes it along. No, no, no you. Never, you always yeah. want to pull towards you. Yeah. This is great. So come come a little broader. Come, come, start you want, from to, over you there. want to come yeah. up to this line? At least up to this line. You're like a pro. <laughs> Let's get a little more on there. Okay. Get a little more on there. So, now you want to tilt it? Yeah. We want to come right to the edge here. You don't really want to. You don't want to make that scraping noise because that means you're getting all the way down to the bottom. Don't Oops, don't get sorry. it all over, Francesca. Just pull it. You want to pull away. You see how he's always pushing it, you know, at the at the angle. Okay. So you need to put some right here. Just uh, to make sure you don't. Twenty-four. So that's what this end is for. And pull away like that. Right. All right. So First time you've ever done that, right? Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> All right. So now, when you put a second tile down, do you use spacers? Uh. Yes, you do. What yeah. you have to do is figure out what sort of grout line you look for. Uh, in the past, big heavy grout lines have always been uh, the norm. Uh, the trend now is to go to a thinner grout line. These are one eighth inch grout line spacers. Okay, so most people would stick those right at the corners. Well, that's they? that's what I did. <laughs> the first one I ever did, that's how I did it. And uh, I spent about four hours trying to dig them out of there after the, the adhesive is set. So you actually put them right there. So you can, you, put yeah, your you piece can stand in. it down. So. You want to put your tile up against I'm give this you the, tile. The space, huh? Get it he's set a little bit and pull it, it. pull it away. Now, your tile spaces will go in like just like that, standing up. Do one here. And you can do one in the middle if you want, and do one there. And then you just snug in. that in, and that's going to give you your one eighth grout line all perfect. the way along. So and these will come out after when you're ready to do the grout. Yeah, they come out a lot easier. <laughs> when you way. don't glue them yeah, in. Yeah, when you don't Thank glue you them in. Jessica. Great job. So one of the things you'll notice when you're doing tiling a lot is you're going to get grout or adhesive on the tile. You always, always, always want to have a bucket of water and a sponge. Yep. Uh, you never want to soak the tile. You want to just uh, lightly, you know, this is just damp. Yep. You just, just want to, to keep it from getting yeah, just keep it from yep. getting, getting too. So we, we just had a question come in. When do you back butter a tile? Uh, when you back and just describe what that means. Uh, you back butter a tile uh, when you generally when you're fitting the last tile in and you, you don't have room to move. Uh, 
what back buttering is, is you're actually putting the adhesive on the tile itself. Uh, some manufacturers recommend certain tiles you want to uh, put adhesive on the floor and back butter as well. All right, so that gives us an, uh, an opportunity to talk about this. When you come to the end of this run, yeah. it might not line up. So how do you, how do you cut these tiles? Uh, there's any number of ways uh, to cut the tiles. Uh, this is a, a product that we sell here, a rigid wet tile saw that's self-contained. So water's in there to keep the blade cool, water's keep in the there, dust yeah. to a minimum. It, it can be a little messy, so it's an outside yeah. uh, application. Yeah. But what uh, is really the easiest thing to use and the cleanest thing to use is what we call this. This is what we call the beast. And really, it's very simple. You just put your tile in. You've got your mark there that you want to have it cut at. And you... So there's a, bla there's there's a, a wheel. See it? You see it? It's a little wheel. And what it's going to do is it's going to score the tile. So you always want to hold it and push away from you. Look at that. And that's it. Cool. It cuts All it right so off. So this would be the piece that you might back butter if you were coming to a corner. That's correct. Right here. Yeah, and it's just a lot easier. That way you're not slopping it over the other tile. Okay. So. All right, so we would continue this whole process when we came to the ends, cut them, cut them to fit. Yep. Okay, and go this way. Yeah, and there's a lot of other tips that, that you people that are, that are looking to do a tiling job, uh, if you go to homedepot.com and look for tiling videos, uh, there's a much more extensive uh, way, uh, more tips, more things you can do. Right. Centering in in the room is, is something that a lot of people uh, struggle with. What that is is just basically finding the set of the room, snapping two lines and working away from there. Right. Uh, and in a bigger in a bigger opening, was that what you'd do? You'd that's in a big in a bigger room. That's what I do. Uh, one of the things is all uh, when you do a certain room, it's all about perspective. When you first enter the room, where you're most likely going to enter the room is how you want to figure the room is going to right. be. If you have plank tiles, you want those tiles to run away from you to make the room look bigger. It's just So if this was the doorway here, you do the long rectangular that yeah, way. Yeah, the long rectangular would yeah. run that way. Yeah. And it strikes it, it, a very th thinning. Yes. Well, <laughs> it gives uh, it gives the impression of uh, a bigger room actually. Good, so. Super. All right. So now we can't gr you know, if we get this thing all done you can't grow it right away, right? No, you have to let the adhesive set for 24 hours, at least 24 hours, and that means no walking on it for 24 right. hours. When do you pull these out? Uh, you pull those out once you're ready to grout after the at next least day. 24 Leave hours. Leave them in there yes, for the correct. next Okay, great. And grouting is very simple. Uh, it's mixed up very similar to the way we, we mix up the thin set. We have both sanded, which is for larger, larger uh, grout lines. Okay. Uh, we have so from eighth inch to a half an inch grout line. Yeah, and okay. we have non-sanded grout, which is uh, for thinner grout lines. The sanded grout actually has more bonding strength, so that way it won't crack if you have yeah. a larger joint. Yeah. We also have this product that we sell here at Home Depot. I love this product, and I did tiling uh, professionally for a while. This what is, is what's called Fusion Pro. This is already a, mixed. This is a pre-mixed product. It needs no sealer you put this on you're done okay cool so um so can we even though we shouldn't can you at least demonstrate the technique i can, you I can show you how to do it it's it's uh we're kind of going to have to hold on to the tile but, well uh, even if you just mock it up but just what's the what's the tricks to uh to proper grouting because that's what people see is the, is the grout job the the one thing you have to remember about grouting is that you want to you know what? Let's let's do one more piece. Can we, somebody else want to come up? All Try right. the hand with the. Uh, let me let me spread it out, and we can get somebody to set here. It's probably the easiest way to do it. And we'll do one more piece and set it. Anybody want to come up? Finish this up. No volunteers. Good. All right. So All right. set a tile. And I'll hand you the spaces after. All right. What's your name? Matt. Matt. Good. Thanks for helping out. So I'll okay, so I'll now wiggle, tight. push that back a little, right? Yeah. And, and here's push it your, away. Here's, yep. your, here's your spacers. Two or three of them. Here's the third one. It'll hold that grout line consistent. Can you push it down a little bit too? Wiggle, yeah, great. Sweet. 
You're a pro now. You'll start your own <laughs> business. Okay, so now let's let's imagine it's the next day. Nobody walked on it. We promised nobody walked on it because <laughs> you know somebody walked on it. Oh, I just need to get one thing. <laughs> so what this is, this we're going to use the uh, uh, the premixed, and this is what's known as a grout float. A different, there are many many different types of grout floats. I like this just because it's a smooth right. surface. I'm taking out the spacers. So the spacers will be taken out. That'll be my kind of job, spacer remover. <laughs> and again, it's very simple. I'm gonna just kind of get this down. I like just lay it in the line a little bit. And what you're gonna do is you always wanna stay at a perpendicular to your grout line. At an angle or perpendicular? Like. This well, you want oh, to be when you do when you drag it across. Okay, so you're so going to be pushing it into the grout line. If you push it down this way, what you're going to do is end up scooping it out of the grout line. So, so you, it would scour so you, it right. Up, yeah. So you want to push it across like that. Oh yeah, I don't think I knew that. And it, it's, it's this is really the the simplest yeah. part of the job, and it really is the the one that makes it look the best. That's right. So this is a little wet, but once you get to this point. You want to, you'll move on to your next grout line. All right, let's have somebody else do that one. Come on, you want to grout? You see what he did? He just went across. So just. What's your name? Kathy. Hi, Kathy. So you, like I said, you're just going to kind of get this a little bit in the grout line there. You want to. You just kind of lay it in there, okay? Plop it. Yeah. Yep. So the, yeah. All right. Now, now this, this is the key. This is what you're going to use. And that has a nice soft bottom. This is your float. So, yeah. Yeah. Sort of across. Yeah, don't get it on like you. That. Don't get Look it on that. you. And that's that's beautiful. When you're doing the whole floor, obviously there's some excess here we you try to clean up. But you're just going to be moving it all across the floor. You don't worry about getting it on the rest of the tile. It's you're going to end up doing what we call a dehaze, which is once this dries right. so try a little bit, you'll Sweet. take a sponge. And just kind of wipe gonna, it off. Gonna, uh, thank you. You get any on you? No. Here oh, you go. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. So I get to keep this later. You get to yeah. You get to keep that. <laughs> we'll sign that. We'll sign that later. <laughs> All right. So now the next, and then you let that sit for how long? Yeah. You let that you, sit. Do, do this it, right away with the really, I mean, you can get some of the heavy stuff off like this right away. Uh, you know, get this some of the excess here. This is actually a little too wet. But uh, after about an hour. You can come back and dehaze it, which is, you're gonna, so you're gonna see that right there. What you're trying to do is just get the bulk of it off. Yeah. That, that grout, that yeah. grout line looks perfect. Yeah. It's great. Better than mine. Yeah, I know. I was just, I wasn't <laughs> gonna say it in front of live television. <laughs> but go, Kathy, better than him. Yeah. So what you, uh, what you would be doing is you'd let it, uh, you'd wipe up the excess, let it dry, and then you can actually come back a couple hours later once it's dried and wipe it down with a cloth mm -hmm. and that will take the rest of the haze off. All right. Cool. And it's simple and this is this is beautiful. This product is beautiful because you don't have to come back and seal it like you do with the regular sanded or non-sanded grout. And it's do good you have for lifetime. to regular sanded grout you're supposed to seal. Regular sanded, I don't think you, people realize you, you that. Sh you should seal it and then after 6 months seal it again and then once every year. All right. So normally your workshop runs an hour or two here, right? It, it runs an hour or two. Uh, what yeah. I generally try to do is you know, I do a little demonstration like this, and then I take ev everybody individuals' questions well, let's, or let's see any if there's concerns. any questions. Any any questions? What? What? Yes. So I may have missed it, but did he talk about leveling the whole thing, putting a le using a level? When? So the question is. Well, that's if your whole house is level. Yeah. So what you're trying, what you're going to do, you're going to level it to itself. You don't really. I mean, if you want to level the whole floor, we do have floor leveler, but very few houses are actually level. So what you're going to do is level it to the house itself. And Which means it could be unlevel. Could be unlevel, that's correct. So after you've done like three or four tiles, <coughs> one of the uh, ways to do that is to get a two by four and lay it on and tap it with a uh, rubber mallet just to make sure that they're all level to themselves. Yeah. All right. Yes? How do you know if your plywood subfloor is secure enough? How do you know if the plywood subfloor is secure enough? Really, I mean, if you're down to the subfloor and you're walking on it and you feel it bouncing, that's a whole nother issue. That's, that's a house issue. Right. Uh, if it looks clean and secure, 
Sometimes what you'll have is, uh, you know, people will try to pull up linoleum and you'll have some of the paper left. You get as much of that up as you can and then put the backer board and the backer board is really what you're securing your tile to. But I'll, I'll jump in on that, meaning sometimes the plywood could be in such bad shape, the existing stuff, it's worth it to pull that up and get down to the joist yep. and start again and put three quarter killer plywood in, secure it really well, because all of this is only as good as this base, you know what I mean? And that's what we always see that. Um, One of the so things people used to do a lot was put Luan plywood down. The uh, mahogany plywood. The mahogany plywood, I, you should never ever do that before putting adhesive down. Uh, mahogany uh, has an oil in it and that will break up the adhesive and your tiles will come up. Yeah, yeah. That's why you want to use a, uh, a cement board, a backer board like this, and that's really going to give you a good base for the right. tile. Right. Yes. No. Would, would you ever use a different, instead of a backer board, would you use like your Dietra or Laticrete or some other kind of decoupling membrane? Yeah, I mean, you can use uh, use anything. I mean, we have a uh, uh, cement board That's like a there. cement board, right? The Those are brand names of cement board? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're talking about, uh, like, like, a, like, yeah, like Tetra. That's actually, mm -hmm. you can use that in a basement. That's because the basement's going to shift. And what that does is that actually separates your tile floor from the floor beneath it. it. Makes it almost into a floating floor. And it gives it more tensile strength. If anything cracks, like the cement cracks, you won't, that crack won't tra travel up through your tile. Mm -hmm. That's a yes. whole different, <laughs> whole different animal. How would you go back and fix a mistake? I know you've never made you, one. Well, but you'd call someone from Home Depot. No, I'm, no, no. Uh, it does happen. I mean, I, I tiled professionally for a while, and uh, I was doing a house up in uh, Hampton Beach, and I got about halfway through the floor and realized that I was just I was coming off really the wrong perspective. I started from the wrong area, and I I went and got a, a uh, floor chipper and pulled them up. If it's one tile. That's, that's wrong. You can try to, what you have to do is basically smash the tile, take it out, scrape everything right down to the, to the and then try to get it in. I, Welcome to True Confessions. Yeah. He admitted he made a mistake. I, I actually have, well, I'll tell you what. I have a, uh, I redid my bathroom. My house is 100 years old. And I redid my bathroom with all glass tile on yeah. the wall. Yeah. And there are two tiles, two of those little teeny tiles. There are a million of them. Yeah. There are two of them that are angled just a little bit. But only they, you know it. And they drive me but crazy. Only you every, know I it. see them every day. So, so no. any any final questions before we have to wrap it up? Yes. So we're removing the tile floor. You're removing a tile floor. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what to expect when we do that, and how how difficult will it be to to get the existing grout out? And it, do you have any recommendations for <laughs> you? So the, the question is, removing an old tile, what to expect? You need and before it. you answer it, I'm going to give my history. There was a time that tile was done in this country in the 20s where they did a thing called a mud job. And they, the joists were here, and they did a little spanner below, and then they put in this much yeah. um, con concrete and yep. mud, and, and it was called mud. And then, and then he put wire lath in it. My job, we used to do... 50 bathroom models a year, one a week. My job as a young apprentice was to rip out these <laughs> floors, and they were jackhammer. You yeah. get, and so you know, you finally get down you, with all this, and once you once you break it through, it'll come out. It'll start getting easier, but then you've got to figure out how to get the really good sub base yeah. in there. So you got to secure all your joists, and then start building up and, and figure out the right height to get it up. But uh, sometimes it's nothing but just bad plywood, and, but so what is your answer to what to expect? It's, it could be anything. Yeah, it really, again, it could be anything. It's, you know, open, uh, do not open till Christmas right, type of right. thing. How old is the house? What do you think? 20s? 40s? 40s. Okay. So not much mud in the 40s and 50s. You probably, I mean, plan for worst case scenario, you're probably going to have to uh, replace your subfloor. What generally happens is uh, once you get the tile up, then you're trying to get the adhesive up and you're going to really destroy your plywood. Sometimes you can get away with putting a quarter inch, just regular CDX like this, down on top of it and then do your substrate. But if there's gaps and things like that, do not put cement board right on top of it. Yeah. You want to have that filled in. So, All right. Well, I want to thank you, Matt. I want to thank you for thank your expertise. You. Matt will be here till 3 o'clock to sign autographs, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs>
But and I want to thank you for tuning in. This is these these uh, workshops happen every weekend at, at a Home Depot near you. Uh, we're glad to sort of be here. We're glad for all the support from our Facebook family that uh, is growing. We now have this new kit that lets us go anywhere. So watch out. We're going to be doing Facebook Live a lot. So thanks everybody. Thanks to our live all these future tile people of America. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Come on down. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.